By way of hands, who's checked their gut microbiome in the last year? Who's analysed their poo? Don't be shy, only I can see you. Well, it's a bit personal, isn't it? But the reason I ask is because many diseases have been linked to which microbes reside in your gut. For example, taking antibiotics can devastate the gut microbial ecosystems that took you years to develop. A bit like cutting down a rainforest and losing all that biodiversity. Humans depend on microbes to digest food and to make the immune system work effectively. This dense community of microbes in the gut is called the gut microbiome, and there's up to a trillion microbes per gram of stool. Think about it. That's a load of microbes migrating through toilets every day. The microbes, the microbiome develops after birth during a period of years um, in a window when the immune system is developing. The immune system and the, the microbiome and immune system develop in coordination. The microbes establish themselves in the intestines, basically a long tube, and inside the tube is the gut lining. It's covered with a layer of mucus and microbes. There's hundreds of species of bacteria, and living next to the bacteria is another microbe kingdom, the hidden archaea. We're going to explore the foundation layer of the human microbiome that's been invisible until recently, the hidden archaea. Unlike the high diversity among bacterial populations in the human gut, archaea is dominated by one single species in the human gut called M. smithy, also known as Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Um, there's up to um, an estimated 10% of the microbiome is M. smithy in the healthy adult gut. That's more than any single bacterial species and it has the important job of absorbing the hydrogen produced by the rest of the microbiome. M. smithy has a very hard cell wall, and that makes it difficult to detect with standard analytic methods, because when we detect bacteria, we bust open the cell wall to read the DNA inside. This technique doesn't work well on our care. The DNA is trapped inside, and it's invisible to most who are looking with standard analytic methods. M. smithy has an unusually thick surface layer um, covered with molecules that resemble those in the human mucus. It's as if it were camouflaged, and it has very sticky proteins on the surface to help, a bit like Velcro, to help anchor and form biofilms in the gut. These adaptations would suggest M. smithy has co-evolved with mammals to be able to colonize in high abundance in the inner mucus without causing immune system havoc. Contrary to immune havoc, recent studies show that M. smithy actually increases resistance against infections. So how can we get more M. smithy to grow in early life when the mucus is most vulnerable to infections? And the answer may lie in human milk. Experiments in test tubes suggest that Mother's milk may help lay the M. smithy foundation during early life. Mother's milk's evolved perfectly for nurturing the infant gut microbiome. It contains special building blocks, a bit like um, Lego pieces, to help the founding microbes get established. For example, there's over 100 different types of sugar structures in breast milk called human milk oligosaccharides, HMOs. Uh, now, humans can only uh, manufacture easily about six of these HMOs, so Mother Nature is still unbeatable when it comes to nurturing the infant gut microbiome. Now, when we take molecules from the mother's milk and we put them in test tubes with M. smithy, it grows four times faster. It's as if mother's milk has the ability to fertilize M. smithy in the infant gut, and in return, M. smithy confers resistance against infections to the infant. Could this be a beneficial relationship, an ancient, intimate relationship between archaea and humans that's been hidden until now? Consider one in five infants can't be breastfed, therefore they may be at risk of archaea deficiency, but we're still not using the right analytic methods to measure this potentially life-changing biomarker. We know that malnourished infants in West Africa completely lack the archaea foundation layer, 
They're at some of the highest risk to gut infections in the world, and they need a proper functioning immune system. The way the microbiome develops in early life profoundly affects immune system development throughout life. 70 to 80 percent of the immune cells are in the gut. And in the first few years of life, they're programmed, the white blood cells are programmed how to respond appropriately to invading microbes, the bad microbes. So it's a bit like the Navy is specialized for a response in the ocean and the Army is specialized for combat on land. The appropriate type of immune response to a virus is different to the appropriate type of immune response to a bacteria or another class of microbe. So how do we get the appropriate education of immune cells? Evolution's given us a pattern recognition system in the gut lining. Continually scans the microbes present, a bit like a barcode or QR scanner. And it stimulates a cocktail of immune hormones to be released. When inappropriate microbes colonize the gut lining, the cocktail of immune hormones changes flavor and the immune cells can become more aggressive. These overly aggressive immune cells create a risk factor for developing diseases or inappropriate immune responses throughout life. This includes asthma, allergy, inflammatory bowel syndrome, diabetes, cancer. The absence of M. smithy in the gut lining during early life could be expected to cause the release of more aggressive um, immune hormones linked to a higher disease, uh, a higher risk for disease development. In other words, the blooming of archaea during early life could become one of the most relevant medical barometers for mucosal health outcomes. Such a decisive biomarker has been missing to scientists so far. And now we need your help. We need your help to share poo with us so that we can screen archaea in diverse populations and age groups. Email me. Ask your pediatrician to check your toddler's archaea foundation layer. And if they don't know what you're talking about, ask them to watch this talk. Pediatricians, scientists, join us. Join our network of researchers developing new tools to screen archaea in toddlers. Collective efforts are needed to screen the hidden archaea in human populations. There are still missing links needed to explain medical mysteries. Why do kids raised on farms have less asthma, less allergy than kids raised in cities? Is it because of archaea? Because screening bacteria hasn't given clear answers to scientists yet. But the archaea kingdom may be one of the most promising leads to emerge in 20 years of microbiome science. The next generation has potential to improve symbiotic relationships with archaea. Microbiome development in early life profoundly affects immune system development, but also brain cognitive development. A healthy microbiome may even make kids smarter. So the blooming of archaea during early life has potentially a large impact on the body and mind during later life, like a butterfly effect. Nurturing the archaea foundation layer has potential to improve health outcomes throughout life and may well be the new frontier in human health. Now, a question. Who's experienced the virtues of a Japanese toilet? So you might not be surprised to learn that Japanese toilets of the future may be able to analyze your microbiome, a bit like visiting the family doctor. They, your toilet may even talk to you. Imagine. Good morning, Mr. Sutherland. Your microbiome's looking healthy today. Daily recommendation, more cruciferous vegetables. Have a nice day. Sounds pretty fantastic, don't you think? What will your toilet be saying to you in the future? I'll leave you with that thought.